He has won multiple Grammy Awards and even an Oscar, and tonight, yet another honor. Prince will be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Now with a new CD and preparations for a tour underway, the often elusive Prince is stepping back into the spotlight. The move. The sound. And oh yeah, the color purple. Add it all up and you have the musical genius of Prince. Today, he's preparing for a coast-to-coast -coast tour, his first in six years. And he's just completed his new CD, Musicology. Prince treated me to a sneak preview during a recent visit to New York City. Want it loud? Sure, go ahead. Heard about 40 now, just east to Harlem. Although he says he's been around, in the past few years, many fans wondered why Prince had vanished from the spotlight. Well, originally it started out as uh, a feud between me and my record company. And uh, then it ended up being sort of a period of time where I could just reflect and uh, get, my, uh, get my head on straight. The music has been ongoing, though. I've never stopped writing, never stopped recording. For more than a quarter of a century, Prince has been making music and entertaining audiences with his outrageous performances. But these days, his style is toned down and his charisma almost effortless. I think throughout the uh, ages that I've been playing, uh, there was a great deal of emphasis put on the show. I was into props and uh, gimmicks. I think a lot of that detracted from the musicianship. Growing up in Minneapolis, Minnesota, Prince started playing music at a very early age and taught himself to play more than 20 instruments by ear alone. But playing the music wasn't enough. Prince wanted ultimate creative control, and at the age of 19, he became the youngest producer in Warner Brothers history. There weren't a lot of artists who were free to uh, say what they wanted to on record, and they were put into molds. The freedom that I had uh, came from a, a long, hard fight of trying to get them to understand that I wanted to be different. That was 1978. At the time, overtly sexual performances were almost non-existent. Prince brought the concept into the mainstream. Well, it, you know, Matt, it really just, it can't help but be sexy. <laughs> I mean, it, it just is what it is. You know, sex isn't so much what you say, it, it's how you say it. <laughs> 1984's Purple Rain made Prince a household name. Nine years later, he changed that name to a symbol as a form of protest against his record company. The media dubbed him the artist formerly known as Prince. So what did his friends call him? Sir. Is that what they did? Mm -hmm. What else did they call you? Uh, master. No, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Four years ago, the symbol was out and Prince was back recapturing the name that helped him sell more than 100 million copies of his 20-plus albums. But Prince never spent much time promoting them and rarely granted interviews until now. Is there a certain push to retain relevance in the music industry at this stage of your career? I really feel a need to uh, school a new generation of musicians. Technology is cool, but you, you've got to use it as opposed to letting it use you. But when you sit down for musicology, for example, and you're coming up with the tracks for that CD, is there any conscious thought, Prince, to say, listen, this sounds like what they're listening to. to this will get me on the radio for the young audiences. Uh, absolutely not. You don't care? No, I never really sat down and did music that way. Uh, when, when Dove's Cry came out, it sounded like nothing that was on the radio. This is what it sounds like when Dove's Cry. Uh, Let's Go Crazy was number one on r and station. And there's nothing been that fast on the radio since. So how does the man who stretched the boundaries feel about where those boundaries are today? Back then, there was an envelope to push. Did you like pushing it? I just said what I felt. A lot of times I didn't know I was pushing an envelope. Uh, I was told that later. In today's time, though, you, you've got everybody thinking that that's the uh, holy grail to do something uh, explicit. 
and uh, what happens is it's not explicit anymore if everybody's doing it. So if pushing the envelope came somewhat naturally for you, you're pretty, pretty convinced that today pushing the envelope is a way that a young artist makes a name for themselves? Well, they seem to think so. I think to not push the envelope at this point is probably pushing the envelope. Prince believes that part of the problem is that young artists are forced to use sex and show a lot of skin because they haven't taken the time to build a musical foundation. Unfortunately, a lot of kids didn't learn how to play music. We want to teach the kids and the new musicians of the future uh, the art of songwriting, the art of uh, real musicianship. If a young musician came to you today, what would you tell them? Well, I'll just give you an example. When I was uh, rehearsing with Beyonce for the Grammys, I sat her down at the piano and I helped her to learn just some simple scales and then try to encourage her to learn the piano because there's a language that musicians know that's a little different than, say, just a singer. He openly talks about music, but when it comes to the subject of his personal life, Prince remains elusive. People speculate on your personal life all the time anyway, so I just think it's important to keep uh, my private life private and uh, my public persona uh, uh, more into music. You know, I'm really a musician at heart. That's what I do. You think it, it adds an air of mystery that perhaps sells records and, gets, and sells tickets to concerts? No, I'm, I'm not so mysterious. I'm a pretty open book. You know, people who know my music, I would say, know me. And once again, congratulations to Prince on being inducted tonight into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. When we come back, how clean is your hotel room? Right after these messages.